Hello and welcome to my channel. This is the first video of the new tutorial on how to build a URL shortener, a teeny URL clone, using Quarkus version 2. Let's first understand what is a URL shortener. Let's Google it. URL shortening is a translation of a long URL uniform resource locator into an abbreviated alternative that redirects to the longer URL. The original URL shortening service was Tiny URL. All right, now let's Google it URL shortener. Open the first result, short URL and Tiny URL website. Now let's copy the URL of my YouTube channel and go inside the Tiny URL website. Let's paste the URL here and add an alias like YouTube JS 2022 and then click on the button Make Tiny URL. Perfect. We got a new URL with the alias. Now let's copy the new URL and open it inside a new tab. Yes, this new URL shortener redirects us to a new long URL, meaning my YouTube channel. Let's do the same using short URL website. In this case, we cannot choose the alias. So let's click on the shortener URL button. Perfect. We have a brand new URL shortener. Let's copy it and open it inside a new tab. We got the same behavior. Good. What we are going to do in this new tutorial, starting from part 1, is to build a new URL shortener project using Quarkus version 2. We are going to build a teeny URL clone, allowing the user to define a custom alias. Are you ready? Let's start and follow my steps. Open the terminal and using Maven Create to create a new Quarkus project. During this tutorial, we are going to use the version 2.9. We are going to put org.js as project group ID and Quarkus URL shortener clone as project artifact ID. The only extensions to define right now are resteasy and resteasy Jackson. All right, go inside the folder Quarkus URL shortener clone and then open the project with a text editor. I'm gonna to open it with IntelliJ. We have the skeleton of our project. Inside the pom.xml file, we can see the Quarkus version 2.9 and all dependencies that we define plus the default dependencies like Arch, JUnit 5 and Rest Assured. Before writing our code, let's remove the code sample generated by Maven plugin. The first Java class that we are going to implement is a Java bin. It represents the entity in our project, the URL shortener class. Inside the package or.js, create a new Java class, put in the name URL shortener. It is a simple Java bin containing just two fields, the string alias and the URI URL. Good, let's generate the getter and setter methods plus the constructors. All right. We are gonna write a lot of unit tests during this tutorial. Let's start with the URL shortener test. In the pop-up window, select all the methods get alias, set alias, get URL and set URL plus the setup method. Inside the test folder of our project, we can see the URL shortener test class generated by IntelliJ. Let's write our test cases. First, we have to declare the URL shortener variable. Inside the setup method, we're gonna instance this variable putting alias as first parameter and new URI object with the string HTTP my URL as a second parameter. I'm gonna write an additional test case 
to check that URL shortened variable is not null before writing the other test cases. Good, let's write the test case get alias to check the value of the alias with URL shortener dot get alias. Let's write the test case for the set alias changing the value from alias to new alias and then using the assert equals to check the value has been changed. In the end, we're gonna write the test cases get URL and set URL in the same way we did it for the alias field. Alright, now it is the moment to run our project in development mode using the command mwen quarkus dev. In this case, we will use the continuous testing feature introduced in Quarkus version 2. Ok, the server is up and running, now type R to run all the test cases. Perfect, all 5 tests are passed. Don't stop the server and reduce the terminal because at every change we will do it. Quarkus will run again and again all the tests. Let's continue our implementation and inside the or.js package create a new interface to define the APIs of our application. Type URL shortener API. Ok. Now add the path annotation specify the value slash API that consumes the annotation with the media type application JSON to specify the format of the data. We have to implement two endpoints, the get and post endpoint. Starting with the post endpoint, let's declare the create URL shortener method. It accepts a URL shortener object as a parameter and returns a JAXRS response object. On the top of the method, don't forget to put the annotation POST. The second method to declare is the GET URL shortener. It returns a JAXRS response object and it receives as a path parameter a string object. Don't forget to use the annotation GET followed by the annotation path and path param with the name alias. As we can see, the URL shortener entity is used as input and output of our APIs. I always prefer to put in place the design pattern down DTO to isolate the application business layer from the persistent layer. Because of that, let me change the parameter of the creating point from URL shortener, the DAO entity, to URL shortener DTO. As we can imagine, create a new Java class inside the org.js package with the name URL shortener DTO. It will have the same field of URL shortener object, meaning a string alias and URI URL. Also, for the URL shortener DTO, let's add the getter and setter methods plus both constructors. Before moving on, in the same way that we have done previously for URL shortener, let's test the URL shortener DTO class. We're gonna do it very quickly because we can copy all the test cases written inside the URL shortener test and paste them inside a new class URL shortener DTO test. Important, don't forget to change the type from URL shortener to URL shortener DTO. That's it. Finally, we can start to implement our APIs. We're gonna create a new Java class inside the org.js package with the name URL shortener resource. This class will implement the URL shortener API meaning implementing both methods get URL shortener and create URL shortener that we declared previously in the tutorial. I'm gonna add a to do just because we're gonna start to implement the create URL shortener method first. Inside this class we can define the object to store all URL shortener entities like a list but it is better to use a different location and not to put the business logic inside our resource class. 
For this reason, we're gonna create a new Java class inside the org.package with the name URL Shortener Service. Let's add annotation singleton on top of the class name. After that, we declare the list of URL Shortener objects as array list. As we can imagine, we have to implement the method create URL Shortener. This method receives our URL Shortener object as a parameter and returns the entire list. Be aware that the URL Shortener service don't manage and it doesn't even know about the existence of the DTO. It manages only the DAO entity. Go back inside the URL Shortener resource to inject the service. Perfect. Let's start to write the logic inside the method. First, we're gonna to check the input is not null. If so, we're gonna to throw a null pointer exception with a specific message. Input cannot be null. If the input is not null, we're gonna check if the input to add is already present inside the list. If so, let's throw an illegal argument exception with a specific message, alias already present. If the input is not null and not present, let's add it to the list. Good. Let's move on and implement the getURL shortener method needed inside the resource class. This method receives a string alias as input and returns a URL shortener optional as an object. Like we have done inside the previous method, we're gonna start to check the input. The string alias is valid. In case of the input is equals of null or blank, let's throw an illegal argument exception with the message alias cannot be null. If the input is OK, let's find inside the list the URL shortener object with the alias equal of the input alias. As we can see, inside these methods, we are using different types of exception. It would be better to create a dedicated exception for our project. What do you think? Let's discover it in the tutorial part 2 in the next video. Thank you so much for watching this video, subscribe to my channel to be always updated about new videos that I will upload and see you in the next one, bye!